So now we're moving on to uh, how to compute the actual uh, power spectrum. So we could, just, we could just look at these amplitudes over all the frequencies, and we will have uh, the amplitude over frequencies. But uh, what we usually do is that we use a method, which is called the Welsh method. And um, in the MATLAB, it's the p-Welsh function that you might have used. And what this function does is that you have your continuous EG signal right here. Uh, you're going to slice the signal into, into blocks, into windows, and you're going to get this time frequency estimate. Here I just represented the real number, and I get a time frequency estimate for this window at a given frequency. Then I get a time frequency estimate for this window, and uh, same frequency. This window, this window, etc. Then I'm going to average the square values of, uh, of the length, and uh, this is going to be give me my power at this specific frequency. And then I redo it uh, for another frequency. I always keep the window the same. I just change the uh, number of cycle here uh, for uh, the tapered uh, sinusoid. I, I can obtain all of my different uh, uh, frequency. So I take the length of the vector, I square the length, and I take the average, and I have uh, my power. If I don't square, I have amplitude. If I square, I have power. So this is what I just said. Uh, you do that at difference. So you ha here I have three windows. So three windows at 50 hertz, I get my power at 50 hertz. Three windows at 40 hertz, I get my power at 40, 40 hertz, 30 hertz, 20 hertz, etc. What you can also do when uh, you're using um, the P. Welsh method, and the P. Welsh method is not that complex. You can re-implement it you, uh, easily just using the FFT function of MATLAB. But you can also implement some overlap. So you can say, well, I want 50% overlap between my windows. And basically, it makes your uh, spectrum smoother. Uh, the problem is that, what's the main problem? It's, hmm? it's uh, yeah, well, it's, it's just twice longer to compute. You know, there's twice more windows. So that's, that's, the, main, that's the main thing. I don't think the independence problem here is a real problem because we're doing averages over these windows anyway. We're not doing statistics. And um, a, a last thing you can do with this is called uh, uh, frequency padding. And frequency padding consists in putting zeros on the side. And what this does, so you, you get your window, you extract your window, and then you're going to add zeros and what this does is that it artificially increases your frequency resolution. So if you had your power spectrum with a, a one hertz increment, it's going to give you a power, and you double the size of the window, this is going to give you a power spectrum with 0 0.5 hertz uh, increment. And you could have well tried to smooth your spectrum to get 0 0.5 hertz, but this is just a more elegant way uh, to do the smoothing. Now we're moving to uh, uh, a little bit more complex measures. So we're done with the power spectrum. And uh, the exercise at the end of this presentation is about trying to modulate these numbers and see how it affects uh, the output. And this is really the base of all the time frequency decomposition. In all the software, you're going to see padding, and you're going to see, uh, you're going to see overlap and, and, and things like that. So it's really uh, the very basis. Now what we're doing is that we were averaging these windows across times. And what we can do uh, instead of that is that we can have data trials. And this, is, this was one trial. And we had at 5 hertz. We had 10 hertz, 20 hertz, 30 hertz. And we have all these latencies of windows overlapping or not. And we were just averaging here to get the power at 5 hertz, averaging the square uh, of the of the, of the length of the vectors. And here at 10 hertz, we're uh, doing the same thing, and we're getting our power spectrum. 